discussion today. I'm Victoria Dominguez, and along with my co-teacher, that is happening in the morning, we welcome you today to the student experience at the college. And I hope you'll like what we're going to present for you today. It should be very interesting and enlightening. I'd like to introduce our two facilitators. We'd like to welcome back Jeff Holt from the School College. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good. So we have just a little introduction, and she's got the microphone on okay. her chest. <laughs> Have to keep speaking to her chest. <laughs> so um, we do have students here today because part of the Guided Pathways perspective is looking at the end users and everything and the people that we're here to serve. And um, I just wanted to show you a couple slides before we get started. Uh, this is the way that we see that students get on board at our college. It's a pretty stepwise manner. You know, we've got it all laid out. There are offices involved in every one of those steps and things that students need to do. And you all think the same thing because this is right off of your web page. Nicely organized, really easy for people to reference and go to those simple steps so that they can apply and register at Citrus. It's, it's very good. But what we found in our research around the state is that this is what it feels like for the students. <laughs> and I don't want you to take our word for it. <laughs> We're going to introduce five students to you, and they are going to um, answer some questions that Ty is going to ask them. And then I'm going to share a little bit with you afterwards. So we can turn this off. And Ty, you want to get the students up front and let them introduce themselves. I'm going to sit because it's about them, not me. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Oh, they agree that ladies first. So <laughs> I start here. My name is Raina Schmitz. I have been coming here to Citrus since 1998, uh, one class at a time. And I'm taking biology, and the goal is to graduate this June and go to Pittsburgh College. <laughs> My name's Jacob Miller. Um, I'm a history major. Um, I've been here for a year and a half. I'll be done at the end of this year. Um, I haven't changed my major, and I've kind of known that was going to be my major since like my freshman year of high school, so I'm pretty confident about it. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Yusuf Abu Hagar. Um, I'm currently a philosophy major slash engineering major, um, and I was also a business major before that. <laughs> um, I'm currently at my last semester at Citrus if I pursue philosophy. Um, if I do engineering, I might do another year um, to complete more prereqs, but yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Rosalia Armas. I've been at Citrus for a year and a half. I am a sociology and administration of justice major. I plan to graduate this spring <coughs> and hope to transfer, uh, receive a bachelor's, and eventually attend law school. Hi, everyone. My name is Christian. Um, I come from Guatemala. I moved here about five years ago. I started as a dentist. I mean, I wanted to go for dentistry and started as a bio major, but I uh, eventually changed to computer science I'm in my last semester here at Citrus, and hopefully I'll be transferring by this fall. Very good. Okay, so our question number two. How long have you been at this college, and have you taken courses at any other college? Uh, I wrote it down and said, um, I feel like it's been forever since 98. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, um, I have uh, I have been uh, having tough time with math, so I transferred to Long Beach because they someone told me they have split curriculum okay. and advised me you're not gonna finish here. So I went there and I was there for two years, and I still struggle with uh, uh, with uh, algebra. Okay. 
So rather than continuing hitting my head, came back to Citrus and I'm here and uh, I just passed statistics. <laughs> Apparently I got a B. <laughs> And Very good. So, uh, you know, between the two colleges and all the support, this is an incredible school. So I'm very pleased to be there. Thank you. Uh, Same question. For a year and a half. Um, yeah, just been here. No other college. No other college. Out of high school. Okay, thank you. Um, same as him. We were actually in the same graduating class from uh, Glendora High School. Oh, wow. Um, and, yeah, we've been here a year and a half. and. I haven't taken any other courses. I applied to be a student at Mount Sac because um, I want to take their Arabic courses, which we don't offer here. Okay. I'd like if we change. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, isn't that just everything here so far? Um, like I said before, I've been at Citrus for a year and a half. Before Citrus, I attended a different community college. I'm not going to say the name, but it wasn't the best. Um, I'm so happy that I. Uh, transferred to Citrus because ever since I've been here I feel that I always I feel like I know what I'm doing because okay. I have guidance and resources that are offered and helpful to me. Thank you. I've been here for about um, three years because I've taken some time off from school and um, yeah and I haven't gone to any other school just Citrus. I tried to go to one that is close to where I live at, but uh, I couldn't find any classes. Thank you. So, Rosalinda, what kind of support um, has been especially helpful during your time here at Citrus? Uh, well, oh wait, you said Rosalinda. I'm so sorry, Rena. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'll change my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wrote it down because I didn't want to forget anybody. Okay. Thank you. All the professors I have here at Citrus have been very supportive and helpful, especially, and I was not supposed to say a name, but Ms. Dominguez is incredible. <laughs> she knew from the early beginning what I needed and pointed me to the right direction. Wow. The right direction. So, uh, the SPS, um, uh, I didn't know why I was struggling, but I found out I have ADD or something like that. Okay. We, we forget things and short memories and stuff. So that department and all the staff are incredible, very wow. supportive. Library, um, I live there. And the STEM <laughs> Center, um, I'm so grateful because without them, I wouldn't be today here. Wow. Because I would have probably just given up. Okay. Um, they have uh, incredible staff. They were there with us sometimes. At seven in the in the morning, seven thirty in the morning, right before we went to class, because they know some of us needed help. Wow! And they will come on their own time, and they will stay there after they get off and the lab is closed. They would still be with us, helping oh, wow. us out until nine o'clock sometimes. So this is a kind of dedication of staff that this college has. Wow! From the STEM center to the other departments, the library, everybody's just very helpful. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. Um, I would say that counseling has probably been the most helpful for me because I know a lot of people taking like excess units, things like that. So like <coughs> knowing like where I need to be and what classes I need to take is especially helpful. Um, financial aid's been holding it down on the car payments, so that's been really <laughs> Um, the OPMS has been really great. Um, they've offered me money for books. Um, they want me to come by three times a semester, and like it's kind of hard sometimes, but I'm able to do that for book money, so that's really great. Um, the library's been cool. I haven't had to buy all of my books, so that's been really cool. Um, not college sanctioned, but rate my professor has been very helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, like straight up. I'm sorry if I haven't taken some of your classes. You might be on the wrong side of rate my professor. <laughs> it's been really helpful to help me sort out what teachers I want to take. Um, I would like to see a lot more support from the STEM Center. Um, I don't have to take any more math classes, so I'm not worried about it anymore. But when I was there, um, like you would have to be there for like three hours, and I don't really have time like that a lot of the times, like to get people to come to you quickly. 
um, to get help in statistics um, in particular. But yeah. So for me, um, financial aid and EOPS are a big help um, to help me be able to pay for like stuff with school. Um, as well as, I actually have a very positive experience at the STEM Center, um, rather than my friend Jacob. Um, <laughs> so, it's, it's not all bad at all. Um, during uh, my final for calculus, I was there all week, um, and the week before that, and they were a lot of help. Um, they're very supportive, and um, they are patient with you, because it's really hard to understand some of the concepts sometimes, and I'll have to have them repeat to me like 10 times, but they, they get it done. So um, DSPS is also, well, I, I'm not a part of it, but I work at DSPS. Um, they're a really good program. Um, the counselors there are very supportive, and I always hear great feedback from the students who come in after they have their appointments, and I have to help them register for classes or, or um, kind of just help them navigate the computers and wingspan and Canvas. Um, they give a lot of great feedback, um, and I always say that the counselors always support them. Um, my counseling experiences here as well have been very helpful with Natalie um, being my main counselor that I go to. Um, considering how many times I switch my majors, and I always have to tell her I'm switching things up again, and she's always helping me out with that. Um, so that's what it is. And yeah. Thank you. Um, well, I'm all about the resources, so I take full advantage of anything that's offered Good. to students at Citrus. Uh, to begin with, if, I, if it weren't for financial aid, I wouldn't be able to take classes here, so I'm thankful for that. Second, EOPS is an awesome program, and I'm so grateful to be part of. Um, they have amazing counselors who are always accessible, and they also help us with their books, which is a big relief. Um, the STEM Center was my second home, like Raina had stated, but, uh, when I was taking my math courses, I was there three to four times a week, and they always go out of their way to make sure we get the problem and understand it. And lastly, the Writing Center um, is one of my favorite at Citrus. The, you need writing for every class, so uh, there has not been one writing assignment that I have turned in that I have not had uh, checked by one of the tutors there, and it really makes a difference in your grade. Thank you. So um, counseling has been like one of the major uh, support parts of the school because without them I really wouldn't have known what I was doing. Uh, financial aid has helped me a lot. Honestly, if it wasn't for financial aid, I wouldn't even consider school at all. Because wow. um, it has been a kind of a struggle. And um, yeah, and the STEM Center as a state a STEM major, I really like the STEM Center. I'm also part of this thing called STEM Trio. And they've helped me with books, and they've helped me with um, getting tutored and stuff like that. So it's been really good. <coughs> now, um, the second part of the question, I think, was uh, what would you have liked more support? For? Yes. So I would have liked more support in, uh, like, getting information and resources more clearly when I started school. Because when I came here, I feel like the school wasn't there, to be honest. You know, I, I didn't feel like the school was there to kind of help me and guide me. I would feel like I had to come here and kind of like ask around, and every kind of office doesn't seem like like they're all part of one school. They seem like, hey, this is financial, it's very separate from the STEM thing, from this counseling thing, you know? So I would have liked more like you start here and um, someone just gives you a really like good overview of how the school works and where to go for every kind of thing you need. Orientation kind of just helps you um, how to put the classes, how to register classes, but not really how do you move forward and stuff like that. So that's what I would like. Can I tell you that? Yes, please. You know, I started a long time ago, and uh, not knowing, uh, being a late learner, not knowing what to take, what classes. All I know is I wanted to have a political science degree. And it was a trial and error not having that kind of guidance. When I returned from back from, um, from Long Beach um, three years ago, I decided I was not going to make the same mistake. So having the counselors was a key. They helped me. They scheduled the classes. They helped me to pick them up. They, they tell me, you know, what, how not to fail, but how to utilize those resources. I have over 100 units 
and I didn't need that many people. Right. But having the guidance, like he said, you know, being told, this is how you, you accomplish your goal. And then if we change our careers, there's still guidance for you to guide you through it and get you back in track. Right. Uh, so I wish I had done that when I started. Uh, and it's never too late. You know, I, I, I'm doing it. I'm taking full advantage of everything. And so I'm very, again, very grateful. And, uh, and I've seen students come in from, you know, from high school. And that's when they needed the most this guidance because whether it's home, their parents are illiterate, whether they don't have the right uh, adult students or siblings who have taken schools and colleges and universities, they don't have that kind of guidance. So you are, you know, the doors to the success of these students. So think about that. Thank you. So the second um, part of the question, um, did you want to answer that? What would you have um, liked more support in, or, or are you good? Uh, just the steps. I mean, yeah, like I said earlier. Okay. Anybody else? No? We're good. Okay. So we're going to go to our final question. What has been hard regarding accomplishing your dreams and goals? This is two questions as well. Uh, what has worked well? Uh, my struggle, algebra. That's always been algebra. You know, uh, that's what actually took me to get tested. Uh, numbers didn't, didn't connect. Okay. Uh, what worked well? All the support I have received, you know, since I returned to Citrus. Uh, especially the STEM Center, the library, and of course the uh, uh, BSBS. Uh, because in one of the individuals that helped me, because some of us, I'm 61, we struggle. So, right. uh, so, again, making mistakes in the past helped us a lot to correct the future. So, that's, you know, having all that support is, is always, uh, there's never too much support for us. Thank you. Um, and then I would say the hardest thing is just time management. Like graduating in two years, you're taking a lot of classes. Um, the way the math used to work really set me back, having to take the lower math classes. And then just juggling, like I've taken six classes in a row, two semesters. Like it's really tough, especially having a job. Um, I would say what's worked best for me is just kind of grinding it out, to be honest just kind of dealing with it. Um, staying up pretty late works, I guess. Um, but yeah, just kind of getting through it and just knowing like at the end, like I'll be out and I'll be able to take a regular load of classes. Um, things that have been hard for me is I think just being young, I just want to have fun um, all the time. <laughs> so... Um, it's just like having to kind of like say no to hang out with friends or just kind of like chilling, playing video games or something and going like, oh, I have to do homework, I have to go to work or something like that. It's, it's tough to do that. So I think that's kind of the big thing is just learning to just like manage, one, manage your time into telling yourself to be disciplined um, and get your stuff done and then go have fun. Um, things that have worked well for me is actually having just a good support system of friends who are also academically driven. Um, because then if I talk to them and I go like, oh, I don't want to do this, I'll just say like, get off your butt, stop being lazy, um, and just go do it. Good support do something system. this weekend, you know. Um, and as well as that is having like the honors program as well. Um, also having classes where you're competing with the other students who want to be the best in the school. Um, it drives you going better. Thank you. One of the biggest challenges I have faced is, um, like Rena said, algebra. <laughs> that was in my weekend subject. Uh, when I started here, I started at the lowest math, and then getting to the next one just seemed so hard. Sometimes I was like, 
I was passing all my other classes doing very well, but then math is always like the downfall. Mm -hmm. So math has been my greatest um, challenge. And what has worked well was the math courses that are now offered with support. Um, they have helped me look at math, math, look at math and understand math like I've never before. The collaborative work uh, made it fun and encouraging. But most important, my professors have uh, always been patient and made me feel, made the whole class feel uh, capable of comprehending and succeeding in math. Thank you. So, um, out of the two slides that they showed at the beginning, I did identify with the second one. <laughs> that thing of like going in a smooth line, that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, at least not for most of us, you know. Miss, you, uh, when I came here, I was about 19 years old, um, and you know, when at least me, when I'm ni when I was 19, I felt like I had all the time in the world, and I was gonna, you know, it doesn't matter how much it would take me. But now I'm 24, and I'm like, man, I feel like I should already be getting married or something. <laughs> so, uh, so it's been kind of crazy, you know, because when I first moved here, I thought it really was going to take two years because they call it, you know, like community colleges are two-year colleges, and then the universities are four-year. But I feel, for a lack of a better word, that um, at universities, there's a little bit more pressure for you to finish. Whereas here, it's like, if you're taking your time, it don't matter, you know, so... Um, that has been a great challenge to me. The time it has taken me to get out of here. I mean, I love the school, but I really want to move on. <laughs> and uh, also that, um, I think I have it here. Oh yeah, so six, I didn't know that you had to have 60 units to move on. I felt like you go, well, that's because I come from another country, but I thought that you came here and it's like, you start here, and then eventually if you just want to move on, or you want to pay more, you go to a university. And then I was told, like, no, you're trapped because you have to finish 60 units. And I'm like, uh, you know, so it's not really a smooth transition. And I feel like most of the students, when we come here, we just want to transfer. Most of us are not just going to get an associate. So I feel like it should start from there. Again, the resources, the tools, like, don't, you know, don't focus too much just on here, but how do we transfer more smoothly? Also, for STEM... Uh, I kind of wasted a lot of time on some GE classes that I later find out that I didn't need. So that was a huge struggle. I don't know if that's something new, to be honest, mm -hmm. that they just added that they took that one part of um, general ed out for STEM majors, but it was a waste of time. Uh, also, the lack of focus. Where I come from, when you study something, all your classes are focused on whatever you're studying, right? Mm -hmm. So... Let's say if you're a dentist, then you, you first take general bio, but then your bio is focused on, you know, the teeth and stuff like that. If you take, like, uh, anatomy, it focuses a lot on, like, stuff that has re is related to teeth. Here, I was learning in bio a lot of things about plants and stuff that I didn't, honestly, I didn't think I was going to need that much in the future. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's kind of unfocused. That's what's hard. That has been hardest for me. Um, so what has worked well, though, is that when I change my major, I didn't have to start from zero. And that's a great advantage, because uh, in other places, yeah, you change majors, that means you start over. Here, I was able to take all my general ed and just pass it on to computer science, so that has been really good. Thank you. Are there any questions from anybody who would ask the panel? Do you have questions that you're wondering about? Um, so you were, you were saying that you know, you felt like you would have benefited from a good overview. And uh, I, I work with orientation a lot, and we find a lot of times that if we make it longer than an hour, you guys are just, you're out. You just can't pay attention anymore. What would help you? What, kind of, what would help you in orientation so that you felt like you had a good overview? Honestly, I think, like, it would help me if it was, okay, if you spread it out, you know, not right away, like, try to feed us all the information in one sitting. But it's like, okay, like, maybe make us watch a four-minute video. I think that's enough for, like, just how to register to classes and stuff like that, you know. And then have have us, like, watch another video. Because a lot of, I don't know how it is right now, right? Because I came here, like, five years ago. But uh, I don't know if now you still have to come to school or you can watch it on your own at, at home. But if there were, you know, more videos, short videos that you could watch at, at your own pace and rewind is better than physical presentation, at least to me, you know. So that's one. And when I say more of the information, again, I want to focus that most of us are transferring, and that's what we care the most. Like, 
it's kind of easy to figure out how to register for some classes and stuff like that. But it's not too easy to figure out what classes you're taking, what is the requirements once you transfer it. You know, like you start here, you're not thinking about the end, you think about the start. I would rather have you start from the end, like reverse engineering. Kind of, if that makes sense. How about the rest of you? Do you have some comments about orientation that would have helped? Um, I, I think I mentioned how orientation was critical for me and, um, you know, uh, we have different levels of learning. Uh, 19, 20 year old is not going to learn as, or, or as, you know, I'm not going to learn at that level. I'm 61, right? But um, I think that, um, but I found an orientation when I took it uh, three years ago. To me, it was helpful because it was the first time I was told, this is what you need, and this is how you're going to accomplish it. So um, it's true, rewinding some videos is good that we can review. To me, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so it's, it's good that this college provides both uh, you know, the, on the orientation, which is um, the visual, the practical, and the tutorials. Anybody else? No? Are there any other questions for your panel? I just want to comment that uh, thank you for sharing because I think it's important. Not that I don't like to hear from my colleagues or, <laughs> or from administrators during our staff development, but you really speak true to, to your experience, to the experience that you had. And each one of you bring it out in a very unique way. Um, so I can't treat each of you the same. If, if you're not like in this little box and you know, you're structured the same, and, and that as a counselor, because I'm a counselor, I need to understand that of you. I need to understand that. You know, there's a student that just wants to grind it. He doesn't want to hear everything that I have to say, right? And there's another student that wants the one-on-one -on -one and wants the whole attention because she's 61 years old and she has a different way of learning. And she just found out that she had ADD. And she passed algebra with a B. Right? <laughs> statistics. <laughs> Those statistics. <laughs> but but it's, it's, it's beautiful to see that, you know, that I'm, I'm really um, engaged with your differences. And I've written tips down and so that when I encounter one of your styles, I know how to handle it. You know what I'm saying? So thank you for the staff development you gave me today because it's good training for me. It's coming from a student. And it's not often that, that we have this. So thank you. Another question. I have to say that um, all of you guys really made great use of the resources around campus. And I know that's not always the case. Not everybody makes use of them. I was curious if, if any of you had friends or people who had attended Citrus that didn't make it through. Yeah, my cousin started, um, he stopped because of, um, he felt it was going to be too expensive, that's what he told me. He said, man, I'm going to go to a community college, it's going to be kind of cheap, then I'm going to transfer, I'm going to get in debt, and once I graduate, I'm not sure I'm going to get a job. So that's why he stopped mostly. And I, I also think, I um, just want to add, like, in, in the universities where I come from, um, 
So they give you a schedule. It's a kind of a close, I don't know what they call it, close curriculum, you know? And it has its advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage, it doesn't adapt to your schedule. But the advantage is um, you are done with your stuff very fast. And sometimes time becomes money, you know? So it's like six years, you know, <laughs> start like adding up. And um, yeah, whereas here I had a semester I was taking a class, a class at 9 a.m., then one in the afternoon, and then I was done with school at 10 p.m., you know? And although I had like spaces, it was just like, I have to stay here because I'm not gonna drive home and back all the time because I don't get that close. So that's another thing he didn't want to do. Like, I was just a little more committed. Did, was that a difficulty for any of the rest of you that when we schedule our classes here, we don't block schedule them, that you might have to come very early in the morning and stay until late at night to get a whole schedule? Or is that not a common problem? Uh, I think that has a lot to do with the guidance that we get. You know, um, once you get the guidance, they tell you, make sure you have a break between here and there. So one is you keep up with your homework, and second is you're able to take a break. Uh, so it has, it, it, it's very key when we have a one-on-one -on -one counselor meeting, that they, they understand the system, the program, what we need. So that's what helped me. And um, my daughter graduated from here too. Uh, she just got her AA degree here. And, uh, um, and I know that she struggled too, but it was key to have that, that uh, support. That's it. Um, I feel like I have the guidance for my counselors, but sometimes I feel like it's inevitable to have, you know, your schedule like one after the other because of the sections that are offered or the specific class that you need. Um, like him, I also have a schedule where I have classes in the morning and then I have some at night. But um, luckily I live closer to, to school, so I get to go home and then come back later at night so I can take my class. So it just depends. I think everyone different. Mm -hmm. Yes. How did you guys arrive at your major when you first came here? I realize that you can and do change your majors once you're here, but how did you arrive at your major when you first got there? I think business um, coming out of high school. Uh, is that what you're asking, like right when you Yeah. Okay. So yeah, right when I started, I chose business just because I always heard um, throughout high school a safe major to make money, um, and you always be able to find a job. So that security felt really good, um, and I chose as a major option right then and there. Then I realized I don't find economics interesting at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I <switched. laughs> So you had no guidance in, as yeah, far I, as a major choice. Yeah, it's I, called I, an I, instrument. There yeah, was I, no I, instrument no, that you I would used definitely to say that it, major. It wasn't like structured how I kind of chose yeah. it. it was and the high school did not do that for you. No, I would definitely okay. say that was something that was lacking. The high schools yeah. never offered any sort of help. Yeah, I'm not going to go there because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you don't want to be there for about five hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the, the lady that was for me, yeah, for me, um, the counselor is helping you to select it had a lot to do with what I was doing at the time, because I've always worked. Uh, my work was representing workers for justice, for janitors, for hotel uh, workers, uh, hospital so that's workers. why you went towards politics. So political science yeah. made sense I like her. because I was in that world. Yeah. But then when I uh, realized the struggles I had with algebra, yeah. my counselor is the one that advised me take statistics with all your classes that you have failed, because I took six and I only passed two. Yeah. We'll help you to take statistics, it's more real world numbers. And you can relate to that. And so it was through that guidance that I changed the, the degree and it worked. Because I also do a lot of community involvement. I get involved in, in, in a lot of things that have to do with social justice and stuff. So it just makes sense. Yeah, I, I have different ideas on that too. So. But anyhow, um, 
I actually believe that your talk would be a great addition. Well, and Rosalinda, um, we had a great conversation. Yeah. Tell them how you felt when you first came to college about math and how you feel now. Um, well, growing up, I've always liked school. I was like, I can go to college. And, like, I love learning. I like, can read. I can write. But then when it came to the math part, it was always like, I don't, you know, everything was cool about college. Like, I could do everything, but math was the scary part. So when I came here, like I said before, I started at the, the lowest math, and I had to go to counseling every day for me to understand that lesson that I learned in class. So I was in class for, what, an hour and a half, almost two hours, and I still didn't know what I was doing. I couldn't do, I couldn't go home and do my homework, so I had to go to um, the STEM center, sit there with the tutor, um, have him or her reteach me the whole lesson that I had was supposed to learn in class so that I can go home and do my homework, and then I still went home and... Forgot it. Yeah, forgot what I what he said or run into another prob problem that was different and I couldn't figure it out. So then when I um, was in, I had a, I had, I had a good math professors here, but when I went into my stats class with support, the extra support really makes a difference. And then the, the work group um, work that we have to do makes it fun and it just makes it different. Because the traditional math class is, you get, you get there, you lecture, you do, you go home, do your homework, so that's it. So this is just different. Like, I've been at school for a long time, and a uh, little change in you know, the way your class is being taught, or, you know, the lecture, the way the lecture is being taught, it, it makes it fun, and, and change is good sometimes. So it makes us learn, and I'm Did really helpful. Did anybody ever test you on your learning time, your, the, time, the way you learn? Um, I've done it before, like in high school, I know that's a big thing where you take a test and you're, you learn this way or you learn this way. Um, so and I would, are you I would, auditory, are you visual, are you tactile, or, you know? And I've always thought I was like, I learned by writing, by doing. By yeah, doing kinesthetic. Kinesthetic, so mm -hmm. I feel like that made a big difference. And I under, I actually like Raina, I don't know how I got an A in stats, but I did. <laughs> And she worked for it. Stats has, I don't know, a subject that I never thought I'd be like, oh, wow, I love stats. But it was a really fun class. <laughs> she actually said she might come back as a math major. <laughs> All right, so we're going to um, kind of wrap this up. But I want to give the students a chance. We've talked to you a little bit about what Guided Pathways is supposed to do. It's an institution-wide change. Do you have any questions for the faculty that are here as you think about changing or guided pathways as we've explained it. You don't have to, but if you have some questions, they've asked you some. Um, I never heard the terminology of guided pathways. It's the first time I hear it today, actually. Wow. Um, and again, had I known when I started back then that something like this could exist where it didn't look like the last slide, you know, a lot of <laughs> squiggly things. Um, I, I, I think I would have graduated a long time ago, but it's a partnership between the professors and the students. Um, that's the way I see it. I didn't rush into anything. I took my time on it, everything. And yet some of us have um, a great structure of learning. I didn't. Um, you know, I was 12 when I enrolled in the first grade. So that has a lot to do with it. Math has been, um, for me, I used to go into the math. There's a mural of the Aztec calendar. That's my ancestry. I used to think, see it in front of it and say, I should know this. I came from that line, right? <laughs> But that, it doesn't, it's not as easy. But again, guidance. And there are teachers that have been teaching for many years who can tell the student what they need and what they don't right away. And that flexibility from that teacher helps the student to succeed, as well as the guidance. So the program is great. Um, the squiggly slide doesn't lie. That's how I felt back then, but not now. I know I'm getting closer to, to graduating. And so it has a lot to do with this foundation. 
Thank Absolutely. You. Do you got anybody else have a question or? I have, I have one last thing to ask you. Um, as we've gone around the state and we've talked about guided pathways, one of the things that the professors often say is, but if we give them very direct guidance, they won't be able to explore. Do you feel that you're worried more about having exploration or more about completing goals? Or is it not a binary thing? Is it you want some of both? Yeah, I've met a lot of people uh, for many reasons. I've met a lot of people that travel the world and their job is just on their computer. And uh, many of them have told me that after traveling and getting involved in cultures and stuff and thinking that that's how they're going to know themselves better, they end up not really feeling like there is a place where they have a base kind of to come to come back to, you know. So and it made me it made me think you know that sometimes when you explore what is hard is that you can not see the limit of that you cannot see like where does it end when am i gonna find whatever i want so i feel sometimes it's better at least in my experience to commit to something you know and when you come here like back in guatemala since you go there and you have a close curriculum if you're going to start a career you're going to commit you have to commit because you can't if you at the, at the, in the middle choose to change yeah you have to start over and it happens you know like life happens and whatever and sometimes our mind goes somewhere else but at least it makes you commit whereas here if you just explore and explore you might just end up wasting time and after you waste time you maybe lose motivation to commit back you know because you're not that 18 year old anymore so yeah i do like more very guided Path, like, I guess that's what it's called. <laughs> 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 I would say that citrus is really a stepping stone for most of us. So, like, I'm really not here to explore. I need to get out of here in two years. You know, like, I don't want to be. I know people that have been here for a long time six, seven years. People that graduated three, four years before me out of high school. And, like, I just want to go to a university. Like, I love you guys. I really appreciate it. <laughs> but I don't want to be here for very long. So I think the whole exploration thing, I think I'd rather explore things when I go to university rather when I'm here because I'm just trying to grind this out and get out so I could go to a different school. Anybody else? I think the exploration is a life learning. Like you know, I have more than enough exploring in my life. <laughs> I'm a chef. I graduated at the Bonaventure in trade tech. And uh, the guidance is invaluable. All right. Can we give them a hand? Thank you, guys. So um, what we're going to do now... And we're going to change this so I don't have to speak into her chest. <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about what some other um, examples are about giving guidance. Weren't they wonderful? Yeah. I mean, and Rosalinda didn't even share that she's got a little girl. So she's doing all of this and raising a child at the same time. And, um, you know, it's, it's amazing what our students do. So... These are the questions we ask them. Um, I don't know if you've looked at your college website since I was here for your opening day, but when students come to pick a major, these are the choices that they have, and by the way, they're on three very different websites. And they have to know, do I want, what is an ADT versus an AS versus an AA? And oh my goodness, there are actually some topics in both of them, what's the difference? And yet, when they're applying to the school, they're trying to pick these, and most often they're picking them from a list of um, 160 choices that may or may not be alphabetized. I can't exactly remember if yours are, but I have to say about 50% of the schools I've gone to, they aren't even alphabetized choices, and you're just scrolling through this long list. And then they have to look at the general education pattern. And honestly... I don't know how many faculty that teach every day in the class know what these gen ed patterns are. And even though you know your class is a gen ed class, it may not work 
on one or the other pathways. And if they get the wrong gen ed class, it counts for nothing. If it's a local gen ed and it's not CSU um, articulated, it counts for nothing. So this is the complexity that they are trying to work amongst. Next one, yep. And you're going to have the slide show, so you can go and click on any of those. Let me tell you, if you don't know exactly, if you teach a class and you don't know exactly what gen ed pattern it fits in, you better do that. That's step one of knowing your curriculum, okay? <laughs> um, so why, why might you have meta majors to help guide their classes? And your school's decided not to call them meta majors, but to call them career and academic pathways. Why might it be a good idea? Anybody have some thoughts about why it might be good to group them together in uh, majors together in a bucket or a group? that a student would make a choice from only six or ten things and then go deeper? Anybody have any ideas about that? Architecture, the curriculum is pretty well stacked. And doing that makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, uh, okay, it's a five-year degree, it's not a four-year degree. So instead of being here for two and then three, you're going to end up being here for five and all the guidelines, okay? So, um, architecture is probably the last of the Renaissance. <laughs> it's a miserable major. Uh, he says that in med school. He says as he teaches it. Uh, I, I love it. I mean, I, you're looking at the last living designer of Tokyo Disneyland. <laughs> I mean, serious, I'm the last living of the, for, for, for the Disneyland. I, I designed the Disneyland. And That's a it's cool an history. It's an incredible profession, okay? But it's a tough profession uh, academically because you need to be a Renaissance person. Mm -hmm. so, um, but it's something you have to love. If you want to be a medical doctor, you need to love what you do. That. You need to love what you yeah. choose. But we have not made that choosing very easy. No, you've done a we, we've ju we just thrown it all out there for people to see. Right, and what? That is a definite. That's what I was getting at. Mm -hmm. was, it's an uh, issue. Um, I, have, I have a degree from. Uh, Hang on, let me go ahead because I only have 30 minutes left for this. So I'll talk to you afterwards, okay? So um, what, when you have your majors grouped together in some sort of an organized fashion, you can actually get to the high schools and say, look, they don't have to decide that they want to be a computer scientist now, but they could think about STEM in general. They don't have to know that they want to be a historian right now, but they can think about huma humanities. So it gives us a way to talk to the high schools and to make some pathways that begin earlier because it's easier to get that information to the high schools. It also allows us to say, if you're in this big grouping, the likelihood is you're going to need to transfer somewhere. And here are those transfer requirements that you've got. So it's helping them to kind of get rid of some of those extraneous things that they need. It also helps them to think about a job. You heard the one student say that he went into business administration because he knew he was going to be an adult and he needed a job. And that's what they come in with. But do they actually know what jobs are out there? And do we? Do we even know what jobs are out there? In my field, which is microbiology, I am just amazed at the ways that I can train people, at, even at a community college now, and they can go out and get a job with a microbiology skill, and, and they can diagnose cancer from cells now with the different new techniques that we've come up with. It also helps them to understand their core requirements that they've got. And as you heard the one guy say, you know, he took all these gen ed classes, and he was talking about the fact that with STEM, we have a psi getsy pattern. So it allows them to take a lot of the requirements down here, get all of their sequences together, and then pick up a couple of gen eds when they're in their upper division. But he didn't know that when he first started. And it gives them a chance to have informed choices. So next one. So um, what are some elements when you're trying to group these things together into what Guided Pathways typically calls meta-majors, but you are calling career and academic pathways. 
One is that each of the meta majors is clearly mapped to the programs in it. So you've got a meta major, an area, STEM, and every degree and certificate is mapped underneath that. The next is that the gen ed courses are mapped within there. Um, no colleges have really done that. We generally say, here's your core classes. Now go to this page, and you have it on your web page, and pick between these 150 different sections to try and get five different requirements. Oh, yeah, two in this area, one in this area, one with the lab here. It's like trying to play with a chessboard that has been thrown on the floor. So in meta majors, you actually help to make connections so they understand, oh, in my first year, I need to take composition, um, area A2, and my quantitative reasoning, B4, because those are considered basic skills. And I need to take oral communication, and I need to take critical thinking in my first year, because those GE are considered basic skills for upper division work. Um, it also helps them to figure out a little bit about electives, and I'm going to share with you a couple of kind of cool things that we've learned around the state with that. It allows the students to get advising and services that are relevant to them. Not everybody needs to go to the STEM center. Boy, you guys must have the most awesome STEM center that even if they're sociology majors, they go there. <laughs> but we have services that are specific to different kinds of majors. Um, math and quantitative reasoning. So you just heard this huge shift that your school has been in the forefront. If you don't know that you're pretty famous, I'm on the AB705 statewide committee. They talk about the work you're do doing here. And they talk about how well you guys have been restructuring the onboarding in math and English for students. You need to look at that math. What is the right math for each one of the majors that these students take? At my school, we found 75% of the majors needed stats. And actually, not most of the math stats, most of them needed behavioral stats or bio stats. Some of them needed business math. They aren't even in the math department. So when you think about how you're going to organize these groups of majors, you should think about that. And then you should think about um, just how that relates to the local labor market and demand. So I'm going to show you a couple ways that different schools looked at things. This is from College of the Canyons. And what they did was they, first, they looked at how all of their curriculum overlapped. Because if you're making a grouping of majors, you would want to make it so that that grouping, the courses that the students take, if they change their major, like philosophy to, oh my goodness, engineering, really? <laughs> then, then they're not going to lose a lot of classes, right? So um, College of the Canyons put it into a spreadsheet. This is a free software called Kumu that took that spreadsheet, and then they were able to ask various research questions. So they asked, what kind of people take photography classes? Who are the people that are in there? And um, how does this match up with everything else we're doing? I think, is it the next one that shows this? Yeah. So here are the majors of people that were in the photography class. And I want you to look at something that they didn't even know when they were doing their grouping. A lot of the people in fire technology took photography. Isn't that crazy? But when you think about the job and about trying to figure out where fire started or was it arson or, you know, uh, do we have gas lines that we're worried about, photography becomes a very important skill that is built into that program. And so this allowed them, them to actually protect it and to give better advice to the students. When they said, we're doing fire technology, they said, you know, in your arts choice, think about photography. Not you have to take photography, but we've found that students find this to be a very useful arts class to fulfill that gen ed requirement. Okay, the next one. Um, this is kind of a funny story. This is Cabrillo College. And as they were working out their meta majors, which they call career and learning pathways, CALPS, I think, their culinary arts program came to the coordinators for Guided Pathway and said, culinary arts, put us in STEM. Okay? And wisely, the coordinators said, STEM. Why? Not, that's kind of a crazy idea, but why? And they said, well, when our students are doing their work, it's all chemistry. 
I mean, bread rises and eggs change from the albumin goes from liquid to solid. And, and that's what it is. And the coordinator said very wisely, but you don't have a single STEM course in your core courses. Why would you fit, fit in STEM? And they said, you're right, we don't. And they said, but you know, when you're thinking about gen ed, would it make your culinary arts students more aware and skilled if they took the non-majors chem class as their choice for area B4 for sciences and did a lab with it because it's a lot like cooking. So the kinds of discussions that you have as you work through what benefits a student, how do we help guide them to even take gen ed that is very contextualized and meaningful is really important. Um, so I just want to show you what this could look like. CCC apply. I think there's actually a resolution at the statewide plenary meeting in April because having gone to all these schools and seen the CCC apply long, long lists and how it's not helpful to students, we really want them to be more responsive to what students need and what colleges want. So what about if instead of having a long list, what if they just had the pathways or the career and academic pathways, and they had seven, uh, 10 choices. This is my college. And then if they click on one, then they're able to see what all the choices are within that one area. So the areas sort of make sense. They have to make sense to students. But then they're given um, a better idea of what might be available within that. Go to the next one. So this is what my school looks like now. That was CCC Apply. But if you come to my school website, You'll see our meta majors that are here. And by the way, we do have another one, but we don't put it there. It's called um, Career Exploration. And it's for students that just don't know what they want to do. And mostly, after looking at data, you're going to see we've, we've looked at a lot of data. People that go into career and exploration, they're not exploring. They're mostly lost. They have the most D's, F's, and W's of any of our students on our campus. So we used to have it, but we pulled it off as a choice. And if somebody puts in that they have no major, we automatically put them in that meta major, and you'll see why. So they can click then on business, and they're going to find out what the business learning outcomes are. And they're going to see we took a summer, paid all the faculty to get some students, and we made movies for each one of the area majors. Click again. They're going to see what each one of their courses, uh, what each one of their options are for degrees, certificates, and low certificates. If we click on business administration over there, again, oh, well, just click on the slide. <laughs> they're going to see that these are the jobs that are available. And there's a lot more. If you scroll down, there's a lot more that talks about what the up and coming jobs are for business administration. Click again. Then they're going to see what every one of their classes are and when we suggest that they take them, first term, second term, third term, fourth term. And you'll see that some of them will have um, a specific course within a gen ed area and others will not because as we've talked to our transfer partners, they've said, you know, for um, – Sociology, we want them to take this particular sociology course. Or for certain majors in nursing, they have to take psych and soch. They can't take any of the other ones in those humanity areas. So um, go again. So if you click on a course, and this is the business math, it'll show you exactly what that course is, and it tells you that's a core course. Click on the next one. And if you click on a general ed area, we didn't have any particular gen ed for business that we thought they should take. So we show them that this is the choices that they can take for that gen ed in that semester. And they can click on each one of those and find out what those courses are and make a choice on it. Click on the next one. So how do they find their way? Click again. Um, let's see. I'm looking at the time here. Would meta majors or career and academic pathways be helpful for your school? This is actually off of your own website. So you are in the process of guided pathways. You're right in this middle group of colleges that are trying to move in and make this a meaningful directional change for their students. And um, these are the, the uh, steps that you're going to be going through. You want to click on the next one? So let's see. You want to just tell them a little bit about this? And then I'll just need about 10 more minutes after this to show them then what happens with the meta major afterwards.
So this right now is a graph of meta majors called, uh, oh, oh boy, <laughs> um, career academic pathways at Citrus. Um, so over the last, in the fall, um, we had several inquiry groups made of students, faculty, staff. Um, we gave them that list of 100 majors and we asked them to create uh, logical groupings and then we asked them to name them. So we took all that, and by we I mean the team that is um, part of the Guided Pathways group called the Mapping and Caps group. Many of them are here. <laughs> um, took all that data, Gwen specifically, crunched it, um, and from that we created these six caps. Now I cannot stress enough that this is a draft. Um, and what's going to happen this spring, um, you saw, you might have seen Dave Carey and myself out there this morning. Um, handing you flyers. We have three scheduled sessions this March for you all to come. Um, you just have to attend one and give us feedback. And they, if you want to show the, so on the website, um, you can sign up, you can shoot Victoria and I an email, or we actually have, um, thank you to Bob Hughes and his team, a nice online um, sheet that you can just sign up that way. So you just pick one of those three, the smart sheet will come to us, we'll provide snacks. Um, and again, this is a chance for you to see where your program lands, to give us feedback on the specific names. We chose the name for each cap primarily from what students named them, right? So as you might have guessed, we named ours as faculty and staff primarily similar to what you see as divisions, social sciences, language arts. That's not always the same terminology students relate to. So these specific names are from what students often came up with. Um, these might change based on your feedback. Um, under each of these caps is um, subcaps. So, do that PDF real quickly. So, when a student potentially chooses one, they're also going to get another breakdown, right? So, I see a science and math cap. Um, I've got these three uh, breakdowns, excuse me, and then they'll show the degrees and certificates and skill awards there. We have subgroups for science and math. Again, preliminary. We really need your feedback on these. Mm -hmm. And what we preliminary, preliminarily think, what programs <laughs> will go, I'm not an English <laughs> will go in each of these. Um, we really, we are planning, we are thinking that we will pilot science and math in fall of 2020 to be our first cap. So kind of exciting. It's the simplest one, and you'll get again. You'll get more information by coming to the Mar one of the March meetings. Please, there's a sign up sheet, right? Yes. So please, if you're interested, you can sign up there. Or as you exit, you can sign up through the website. You can send Natalie or myself. You know. And all this information is on the Guided Pathways page. You can look at this PDF. You can look at the. Um, the principles behind how we came to these results as they are now. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So, what happens after you do this? And let me just warn you, there will be some heated discussions. Some departments will believe that they belong in every cap. Mm -hmm. Communication, I don't know if there's a communication here. Every campus I go to, they believe they belong in every cap. Sometimes English does too. But, um, have those discussions because these students that were sitting here, they need that clarity. They need that clarity from us. And it's not life or death what cap they go into. So go ahead and click on this and let me show you how it works at my college. What are the outcomes? We've had meta majors for three years now. So um, what we have is for each one of our meta major or your cap, we have a team of people that take care of those students. So there's a financial aid advisor. Did you notice every one of these had EOP and S or financial aid? There's a faculty discipline expert that helps them with their major, a counselor. We have ed advisors that are classified people that triage for counselors, administrators, um, peer advisors. We have students that are on these teams. And actually, uh, Raina, I heard that she was like a peer advisor in her stats class, getting the young students to organize into study groups. They're, they're, they can say things we can never say. Um, we have a data coach. All of our data gets translated back into our completion coaching communities. We have an academic development faculty who's a specialist in basic skills and how students that are struggling can be diagnostically helped in one area instead of having to go and take a whole class. 
And then we have student support services representatives. So for each one of our meta majors, we have this completion coaching team. And it allows us to have program clarity and sequencing. But the most important thing is that by that group of students that belong there, we can send specific data nudges. So for instance, if it's a primarily transfer to UC, which our STEM is, we send them nudges that say it's time to get your application into UC, which happens to be different than CSU, which happens to be different than the privates. So we can give them really clear targeted messaging. We have clear contacts. Our goal was that every student that comes to our campus knows a face that will answer their question or get their question answered. It's not a web thing, it's not a phone call, it is a face, and it is one of these people. And they might come to me as a disciplined faculty and say, I didn't get my financial aid check. And I say, I am so sorry, I know that how that's hurting you, but we have this person that's on our completion coaching team, and I'm going to take you over there, and we're going to deal with that. So it's a village that helps the students. Go to the next one. Um, so this is actually, I'm looking at, this was our business um, completion coaching team. We meet and we go through the data. If you can click over there. We found, we've got about 35,000 students on our campus and that's way too many for each one to know a face. So as we rolled it out, what we did, you can see in Arts and Humanities, there were 2,463 students in that major, in the majors within that meta major. We decided while we get rolling, we can't solve the problems of Reina's that have been here for 18 years, but we can start fixing things for the new students. So we found our first time in college, FTIC, was 477. The people that are on this team, we divided them up. We knew we could contact every one of the 477, and we, um, we could look at some data that I'll show you in a minute and know whether we needed to call them or email or text them, but we got to them directly. We were real humans that were connecting with them. Go ahead. So, and actually, if you look at our meta major, there's, this was um, a year ago, 31,000 students, 2,300 were arts and humanities, 750 were psych majors, and 75 were African American psych majors. So we have, what we did was we took our, um, our staff and faculty that were in our African American initiative, and we assigned them specifically these 75. And then we took the psych department and the faculty that were interested and we assigned them these psych majors. So we were able to take and divvy out by need what the student contact would be. And so this is the kind of data that we get. These are our STEM students and I hear that you're going to roll out with STEM first so that's why I brought our STEM data. I have to tell you the first time our STEM completion coaching team got together, our first assignment was to look how all of our program schedules overlapped and suddenly our astronomer stood up and said there is no way a student can graduate in two years in any STEM major. None of our schedules will allow that and, and we're looking at him like how did he do that so fast but we did it and he was right they couldn't. So um, this was looking at how many were attempting 15 units, which is what they need if they're going to get through in two years. And right now, in year five of Guided Pathways, not all of our students need to be 15. We're really trying to figure out how we really deal with our part-time students. They're, they are a different breed. They need different kind of care. But we were able to more than double the number of students that were able to get 15 units. And as we're sitting in our completion coaching team, we talk about what some of the factors are that might have helped that and some of the things that we need to do in order to improve it. Next one. And then um, 30 units, and you can see we didn't get that bumped up quite as much. That's because we started getting into harder classes and we found out there were some that students weren't passing well. So non-pass rates, course sequencing, what we needed to do, three-way contacts. Not just a single person reaching out, but a single person and a specialist. Um, pinging people at 15 units to remind them that they needed to get ready to look at 15 for the next semester. Okay. Um, let's just skip that for right now. Um, the next thing that we were able to do was look at our dual enrollment, which I know you guys have really expanded in dual enrollment. And this was giving us the number of students that we had 
in the courses and the programs and the declared majors that feed into our college. So now we're getting ready for them to come to school, and we actually are bringing bus loads up by meta major from the high schools to talk to them about the kinds of careers that are available. Next one. Um, it also allowed us to analyze specific pathways within the meta major. So this is our ag business pathway. And as we were analyzing it and the students were going along, we suddenly started noticing that we were having problems and we had gatekeepers in these areas and we were losing all of our majors. We were never able to do that before. We had ideas, but because we didn't have mapped out, we didn't know where those narrow holes were. We just thought it was kind of random. So, ooh, okay, <laughs> for a couple of minutes left. But um, those are the kind of things that having the CAPs, the CAPs, will allow you to do. It helps you make guiding the students more manageable. It gives the students real humans to communicate with. If you go, or if any of you have kids that went to a four-year school, think about the kind of concierge service they got, right? I don't think our students deserve any less. These, these great students that were up here sharing their dreams with you and some of their struggles, they just represent all of the students on this campus. And they can't fix these things. They can help us see them, but we're the ones that need to fix them. Um, so that's what I came to share. Does anybody have any questions specifically about moving forward and thinking about how you're going to clarify the pathways for your students? So, um, you know, if you look at your website, which I've spent a lot of time on, it says academics. And then when you go to academics, you have to select whether you're going to look at an AS, an AA, an ADT, or certificates, or what, um, beyond that, there's one other little thing. At my school, when they go to academics, they get that page with all, all of the meta majors. That's it. And then they just go deeper. And they can go backwards and go deeper in any one of them. Um, let me just share something that he brought up about career um, exploration. Tomorrow, the Academic Senate has a webinar from 12 to 1, and we're talking about career exploration and onboarding, along with a couple of other things. And you have available to you for free, help me, do you guys use Career Coach? We do, uh, primarily in CTE. We have other programs as well, but we do have Career Coach um, that's primarily in our CTE department. So Career Co Coach is a, um, it's a national outlook for all jobs across the entire United States. And it breaks everything down, not just by state, but by region. So it's through something called MZ. You can go right into it and look right in your county and find what kind of jobs there are available, what they pay, what are the bright outlook jobs. And um, that career coaching and another um, website that we talked about last week allows you to have your students explore. And it's free. The chancellor's office bought it about five years ago. Uh, you can get it and modify it for your own school. I notice that when I go to your student services area, there isn't an automatic click on it, but you can do that. And students can be directed in orientation. Go to, do you do that in your orientation? Tell them to go to career? Awesome. Perfect. So there's a lot of things. There's a lot of, sorry, we are just about out of time. There is a problem with what the instruments that we're using, okay? It's not getting them to the door. It's, it's not even getting them near the door, and you've got to fix that. This won't work until you do it for yourself. Okay, thank you. That's what I've been trying to tell you from the beginning of the question. Um, so... We do have other things. We don't have hours and hours to talk to you about the way that we do on board. You've got some onboarding things tomorrow. If you've got 12 to 1 free, go to the academic website and watch our onboarding webinar where we're going to talk about several ways that we've been reaching out to high schools and getting students to onboard early. 
Thank you for your time and attention, and go to one of those vetting things so that you can have your say on your career in academics.